Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Shattered a Tale of the Forgotten King. It's being developed by Redlock Studio. Currently they have a Kickstarter running with a goal of $85,000. Currently they are at $52,000 with 13 days left. If you pledge $22 or more you will get a copy of the game. They are shooting for a 2018 release and it will be on PC and Mac. They also have a stretch goal that if they meet it, it will be put on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. This demo that I'm about to play is not available publicly, publicly unfortunately, they sent it to a few press-like folks like myself, so I'll be showing that up for you today. A link to the Kickstarter will be in the description below the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I have already played through, and I will be playing with a controller. It's I haven't even tried it with the keyboard, honestly, because they said definitely play it with the controller. So I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and read what this guy says. A lot of people I'm going to skip because they're tutorial type things and obviously I already know how to play. Oh, who's waking up in the dark? You cannot speak. Interesting. You are not the only one. It has always been a silent world. Kind of. And your memories? Nothing. Never mind. Do you at least know where you are? No, of course not. You showed up too late. This place? You're at the heart of Limbo, a fragment of Earth, drifting under the world. There is nothing to do here except contemplate the eternity going by. At least everything is calm, silent, serene. The Demigurgs ignore all our existence and leave us in peace. I don't know where you come from. I even ignore how you got here. Probably fell in a crack during the Cataclysm like us. But you're here, no? Others weren't as lucky. All right, we're going to skip those. Those are just tutorial type messages. So we have I'm using the analog stick to run. B will jump. We can also do a double jump. We have a roll. We can also have like an air dash, which actually uh, is pretty, pretty fun to use. We got a light attack, heavy attack. What's funny is the heavy attack is just about as fast as the light attack. It just recovers a little slower and it takes a little bit more stamina. You can see our stamina and hit points at the top left there. Be careful, he's a hierarch, a fallen, barely alive, not very smart. He trapped himself on his own between these crystals, but watch out, he's still dangerous. Alright, so we'll get our first taste of combat here. We'll see he's got a few different moves we'll try to avoid. Let's also try to hit the right button, there we go. One thing I've noticed that is a bit weird is there's a bit of a delay after you attack before you can dodge and it's not entirely clear from the animation that that's supposed to be that way i think it could be a stamina thing as well ah. see like i tried to dodge there but i couldn't so i don't know if i just didn't have enough stamina or what but yeah the dodging thing is probably one of my number one complaints already is that too often because the dodge is so slow and because the dodge takes so much stamina I end up just running running in, getting one, maybe two hits, dodging out. Getting one or two hits, dodging out. And it, wow, wow, generous. Uh, so I end up, like fights end up taking forever, unless I just have a lot of healing items, which we'll, we'll go over in just a little bit. But if I have a lot of healing items, I just go in and just kind of mash until it's dead. So that's one thing I hope they fix which I'm presuming they will, because this is an early, early, early build of this. So many things can and probably will change. Oops. This is where we're supposed to use the air dash. I was too busy talking to uh, properly air dash. So strange. I hadn't talked to anyone for a while. My tongue is dry. Ah, damn it. I'm, it's so weird to have X be your talk key. I keep thinking it should be a so strange. I hadn't talked to anyone for a while. Your thoughts are opaque, you know. I can barely hear them. It's taken me a while to get used to that as being the, uh, the talk key. It, but most of the time I end up jumping. Look, another one. I'll keep an eye on him if I were you. There's a little bit of uh, translation issues. I don't think that the developers are native English speakers. You can also tap right stick you can see i'm i'm uh, locked into him now i love that backwards dodge too that's the main reason i like locking in in the first place so here we'll kind of show you what i was talking about before 
So I'm going to wait until I get enough stamina and attack, but then I'm going to dodge. See, now, now watch this. I'm going to attack and then dodge as soon as I can. So ready. Well, I, wow, it was very slow. Nope. Too slow. So see what I mean? There's, there's, it feels like there's an odd timing issue with, with attacking and dodging where there's too much of a window that you can't dodge. So I end up, see, I hit it multiple times there. All right. I think we were actually out of stamina. So let's do that again. Cause it didn't seem like it was that bad before. Why am I losing so much stamina? That's weird. So again, see how slow that is? You can't really get in and get out. So a lot of times you just kind of have to go in, swing, wait for your stamina to come back. And honestly, a lot of times I just kind of go in here and just start mashing. <laughs> again, this is almost certainly going to change. And a lot of times too, depending on the attack like that, he's just going to miss you no matter what. But that is definitely something that if we're going to be doing a lot of fighting and this game seems to be a combination of 2.5D platformer, as you can see here, and action combat game. This is Choron, the Warden of the Gates. Don't mind him. If you wanted, we would already be dead. Guy will not talk to us or anything. These things, I don't quite know what they're supposed to be. Uh, basically, the idea is... I guess they're like key slots, basically. When you activate those, something happens. Sometimes you have to get more than one to open a gate or open a door or something like that. But that's what they seem to be there for. First, I thought they were waypoints, but that is definitely not the case. So here we have a few doors that we can go through. Um, I don't... I'm trying to remember. Some of these are nothing. Like, you just go in and it's just kind of showing you scenery. Let me go up here. I like the I like the areas and we'll see quite a few different environments. This is a decently long beta. Yes, yeah, some areas. I'm not sure if this is one of them. Oh, whoops. Wrong button, but that worked out. And it looked a little smoother too. If you look at that bottom right number that just went up, that's your healing items. The healing items are a little strange. Oh, okay. I'm not sure why I didn't jump there, but uh, the healing items are a little strange. Because when you heal, it doesn't just use one. It uses multiple. And I don't quite understand why that is. I'm guessing it's based on how much it heals you, maybe. That's that's why. I, I haven't really done like extensive research on it. I don't think I actually came here before. No, I did not. I must have missed this one earlier. No, okay. So we just kind of went in a circle. Because the last time I was here... Yeah, that guy was over there. Ah, okay. So I just went the other direction. I don't think I saw this guy before. You don't give up easily, do you? These gates are old relics. They come from Narayana, I think, the mythic throne of the king. They follow Churon, unless he created them. Maybe they are, are as one, or he's only one of their manifestations. I wonder. They lead to the kingdom, or what is left of it. Myosis, Mydrys, Puskant, the three broken parts of Hypnos. Not exactly the type of place we like to go. So many questions. There is someone indeed, someone who could answer all of your questions, wake up any memory, give you your name back, but he left eons ago. Not disconcerted? Your naive ambitions honor you. We could wonder which one of the two of us is the most deranged. I can guide you, maybe, through the ruins of the world. I've had enough. Might as well do something useful rather than wait for the end here, no? This, this door leads to meiosis. It's the only path that a newborn like you could hope to take, and yet, Terrible wonders stretch behind this door. Dark powers reign up there, and their servants are legions. You and me might not survive. So listen intent. Hear my whispers. Let's find the king of this shattered world. Yeah, I completely missed that guy before because I went this way. Let me go to this one because I think this is a very short one. It shows you a different environment in here. But the idea here is that... There was a world and a king slash god. Everything was going great, but then everything went not so great. And the god disappeared. And your character, I like this area looking area. There's nothing to do here. At least nothing that I could find to do here. But uh, it looks nice. 
I presume this will probably be a stage you can go to eventually. And by the way, I'm using the right stick. Well, let you move the camera a little bit. Depending on what they want you to see, you can't always move it all the way around. So that was automatic. When I go over here, it moves the camera. And I can move it a little bit, but I can't like switch it back. It's positional, position based. But anyway, so your character is trying to get their memory back. And supposedly the king can help him with that. But the king has conveniently gone missing. I don't think I went here either. Interesting. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah, I think I have gone here. Look down. You don't definitely want to look down because sometimes it looks like there's just a pit or a death, <laughs> death fall. But that isn't always the case. What is this? No. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see this one before either. I'm not sure how I missed all these. I'm not sure what that creature is either. I'm sure, again, once the full game comes out, if and when. Which, of course, I always have that caveat, right, with Kickstarters. It might not ever come out. But they're actually doing quite good on how much money they've raised. This game is also uh, one of the Square Enix Collective games. In other words, it's one of the indie games that, uh, I guess, Square helped to bring to Kickstarter. So from what they saw, they thought it was enough to, to back it. So here's another enemy. Now, these guys are a little bit easier because uh, one reason you can do that and just kind of wail on them with heavy attacks from the back. And they kind of get stunned enough that you can just kill them. I think some of these enemies, too, you're just supposed to jump over. Well, and attack from behind, not necessarily just jump over and skip, which you can do if you cho so, so choose. Oh, there was another short one. There actually might have been something else there, but uh, let's go back real quick. We'll skip the enemies. But yeah, I, th I get the impression some of these enemies you're supposed to like jump over their attacks and attack them from behind. Especially with the dodge being kind of delayed as it is. Even without... Oh, no, okay. I thought I was maybe running into it, but no, don't think that's the case. Uh, let's see, where is the little guy at? I think he's by the one we need to go to. I'm going to guess it's the one with the face. That looks the most imposing. Because there is an actual level here. Cordurite. I'm sure I pronounced that correctly. The stories say that Cordurite is the oldest city of Meiosis. A long time ago, its citizens created one of the rarest ethereal concepts, alchemy. They became demigods, capable of manipulating matter. Between the Cordurite wa walls, we can still hear the echo of the arsenic's copper song, chunks of thermaturgic mirrors, and the silence of dark glances. You will see for yourself. All right, so we're actually gonna go down here. Oop. That landed on his head. That should've did damage. If it can kill a turtle. See what I mean? It kinda seems like it's easier to just jump over them. You turn right around. Also, if you can like you just walk in front of them, that's probably a little easier as well. So here we have one of those things that we need to activate. So we know somewhere there is a door that is open. Or is that the case? And again, always look down and around when you're in areas like this. So if you read the Kickstarter and just from reading over the like the presser that they sent me, uh, see that opened that door. So we could not have went there without going there first or down there first. So kind of juke out an attack here. I was using light attack. These guys, like I say, I think it's better to just use strong attack because they kind of get staggered and you can kill them before they can react most of the time. But supposedly this game is going to focus a lot on story and lore. It's apparently based off uh, the developers, I guess, created this fantasy world for, I think they were saying D&D &D or some other pen and paper game. And kind of over the years, they fleshed it out. And this is it, like in that same same setting. Go down here, and I'm sure you notice there was a different path that we could have went in the other direction. I think we have to go back there at some point, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. But the there's barely an in-game language that your character has to learn by finding these special objects, and and I don't know how they're going to implement it. But the description made it sound like you need to find these lore pieces or you don't have to find them. But the la uh, learning more of the language 
and discovering more of the game's lore and history will change the game itself as well as changing the in the uh, change the ending itself which I think it should be interesting. I'd like to see it change the how it's going to change the gameplay. One thing they mentioned specifically was that like let's say you find a hidden area or maybe fight a boss that you might have missed that like an optional boss, it might unlock hidden skills. Cuz this game is going to have like it sounds like it's going to have skill tree type advancement where you can pick up passive and active skills. But there's going to be hidden skills as well. And to get those hidden skills, ah, hell. To get those hidden skills, you have to find, like, you have to do certain things. Maybe clear a certain level completely or fight a certain boss, things like that. I definitely wish this area had more waypoints. It's hard to really criticize these games too much because, like, you know, th this might not even be in the final, final game. But I know I had to keep doing this the first time I played through because I would like make one small tiny slip like that and had to do the entire whole area over again. And it's not really worth killing these bosses or these enemies, not really bosses. Uh, I think I made this mistake before. I tried to just jump across and see how far I could get by jumping and gliding to the right. Uh, it did not work out. If we get stuck too many times, I can cut out this part because I do want to show you the majority of the, the demo like up to there is a boss included a very easy boss which again i assume they're still working on mechanics for bosses and even deciding what they want to give them as well as like actually programming them in as well i love having any game with a double jump is good having an air dash is even better all right so is there anything over here no okay so i do need to go up I keep forgetting how high I can jump. Go ahead and just get over, go this way. Let's keep going to the right. Shoot. Almost. I will say I don't like... I wish the camera was a little bit more zoomed out. Because too often... Oh, there he is. A key. Geo, geodesian key. Yes, that's 100% correct. There's another one of those things we need to activate. But I uh, don't think we can make that from here. I don't want to take that risk. So... But I don't like when you jump. A lot of times the platforms go off screen like that. So you, I mean, like that, it wasn't that bad, especially when the, the platform is not moving. But when there's moving platforms and you jump and the platform goes off screen, that's a little irritating. Hopefully that's something that they fix. Now this is a waypoint. So luckily we got here sooner than, than later. And as you probably figured out, there's three different things we have to activate and we have activated one I think this I think, actually I think technically this is the waypoint that thing. So let's head back this way because I think one of them is over here excuse me sir uh, yes yeah I tried to do like two heavies and a quick on those guys oh I didn't see you there oh already here maybe you're not that bad this poor guardian seems to think we are foes, but how to blame him with his lost sight? Don't count on me for searching on it. I'll wait here for you. So yeah, that guy you do not want to mess with. Well, it's sort of a guy. It's I, I thought it was just a trap at first. I didn't real I didn't put two and two together with what he said with an item that you find later on. Because I just was like, oh, it's a trap. We need to disactivate or deactivate somehow. Ooh. go over here so we can heal the healing takes a long time I don't know if you really noticed like how long it took for me to heal there but yeah it's a while honestly it seems like for those guys just kind of getting right up on them and attacking seems to be the best strategy which I guess it is like Dark Souls in that respect at least for bosses in Dark Souls it was always it seems like the optimal strategy was to get between their legs and swack it sounds terrible but if you play Dark Souls you know what I mean all right, so we've got two of the three activated. So let's head on back. I have noticed in the demo there's a decent amount of backtracking because another stage coming up, we're going to be doing some backtracking as well. It's not too bad, though. In fact, if I really want to just cut time, I would just, I would die. 
and it would take me back. However, I don't know if you noticed, but you actually do lose those healing items that we have at the bottom right. Like now we have 15. If I die, I actually, you don't lose all of them, but you lose, I don't know how, I'm not sure if it's a set number or how that is determined. Uh, can I get up there? Uh, no, let's, let's sort of try it. Yeah, I think we can. Hold on. There we go. It's actually much easier than I thought it was going to be. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the way. Yeah, I messed that up. I completely got out of uh, out of whack when I was whacking on him. All right, so we use that key that we found. Let's go up here. Another thing that was mentioned on the. Oiben fragments. Oiben fragment? Sure. Either one of those is fine. Yeah, let's try just kind of stay close. Yeah, see, he. Well, actually, no, I think he did hit us there. The AI does seem to get a little bugged out sometimes. All right, so notice we have 18 healing items right now, or healing essences, whatever you want to call them. And you'll notice we keep getting more whenever we kill an enemy. So I press down on the D pad, and I use two of them. I don't think it's always two though. That's why I'm saying I think it's based on how many or how much damage you've taken. Let's open that up. We got some more of the healing essence things. Now we've activated that. Let's go back. Now I think we could technically drop down here somewhere, but I'm not sure where. So let's just motor on back. You can move pretty quick with the, uh, the air dash. You can also jump to your death very easily with the air dash. So keep that in mind. But supposedly this game is, and I say supposedly just because, well, I mean, it's on Kickstarter, so you know how things go with Kickstarter. I, I mean, I personally have no problem with Kickstarter, obviously. But there's always the chance that it just, you know, doesn't come out. The game doesn't come out. That's just the thing with Kickstarter. I'm hoping they do reach their goal, though, because this game does seem quite interesting so far. And like I say, I'm, I'm interested to see how they implement this idea of having like hidden skills that you can find just by exploring and doing optional bosses. Because a lot of times doing optional bosses and exploring is rewarded, but it's done like from the, like, oh, you got, you know, an extra armor piece or something like that. Not here. Yeah, see how long that took? You've got to get really far away. There we go, he's dead. Oh, let's grab the chest. Let's not leave that. Probably important. We got the guardian eye. Hmm. Seems like somebody was saying something about an eye earlier. Ah, I'm sure it's coincidence. See, those guys much easier. Two strong, two heavy attacks and a weak attack. We'll finish them off. But I do like figuring stuff like that for different bosses. Or not bosses. But different enemies having different ways to defeat them. It's not just, oh, they have different attacks and they have different amounts of hit points. They have different patterns, different defenses, different weaknesses and strengths that you have to figure out in order to, to get past them. Now, speaking of getting past stuff, I have to remember if this is the way we go. I'm actually going to kill these guys just for more of the hit point things. We're going to activate the eyeball and this person now or this thing, rotary wheel thing now knows we're a friend. So that is one thing I, I would like the dodge to be a little quicker. It doesn't have to be like frame interrupting like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta or anything like that, but a little bit faster would be would be nice. But again, it's not surprising the combat is not 100% polished. Oh, I thought he was dead, my bad. My mistake, never assume they're dead until their bodies are on the floor. Double tap just to be sure. But yeah, I am interested to find out how they're going to implement this. This, Because they weren't, uh, other than mentioning skill trees, like hidden skills that you can unlock by doing optional things or, you know, uncovering certain language, but like uh, learning the language, things like that. They weren't very specific, which, you know, understandably so. Did I get hit there? That's one thing, too, that they hope they make a little bit more obvious is a lot of times I'll get hit and I feel like I don't really know how I got hit or I... I feel like, oh, I, I got missed. But then I'll look at my health bar and I'll say, oh, never mind. I actually took damage. All right, let's activate this. Oh, 
see anything around. I do think they, they've done a really good job with the aesthetic, though. With the character, the enemies, uh, even like the, the music's very subtle. In fact, in games like this where they're relying, making it seem kind of creepy and dark, I actually prefer not having music at all or making it very, very subtle. Uh, let's see what's over here, because I think last time I didn't even come over here. I went to like some entirely different, oh, hello, area. Ah, okay, that did, did damage to him. Awesome. I was thinking, ah, eh, you know, with it being alpha, it almost certainly won't damage him. But it did. That's pretty uh, pretty awesome. I love when I can, any game where I can use the monster's own tricks against them, I am 100% for. I love that. I love using the enemy's traps and bombs and whatnot to, to defeat them. Get another fragment. Probably should have waited a little bit longer there before I jumped to be safe, but I think this, I was gonna say that I thought this might circle back around, but I don't know where it would go. Didn't we come this way? Or did we? Yeah, this is the entrance, right? Yeah, okay, interesting. But yeah, I really like the aesthetic, the kind of like just creepy, quiet, alone vibe you get from the game just due to how the, like the sounds echoing off the walls and what have you. Uh, I, I quite like that. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and go to the next area here. We still have a little ways to go. Rashamara, Rasasamara, I don't know. I'm even going to try. In the twilight, we heard the crackling of flames boiling the Olympics. Under their masks, alchemists searched for new recipes to curve stones and shape rivers. Then come then came the void. Within a few minutes, everything disappeared. The perfume of the dead could be smelled for days. You can stop me if I wander off topic, you know. D doesn't want to give too much of the story away. Speaking of giving way, hello. I don't think they can fall down here. Okay. Yeah, see, even like an attack and immediate dodge as soon as you can will result in a hit. God, that... Ah! Nice. I found a bug. Put a bug report in. So you saw the health, the healing went off, but it didn't actually take effect until just like a second too late because I had full health. But healing takes forever. So you've got to be really far from enemies. Now, I like what they've done, and I really, by the way dislike and this is just a personal pet peeve of mine when people call like anything with a like a stamina bar like dark souls like combat where you got to manage your stamina oh i kind of got lazy because like oh he's surely he's surely to god he's almost dead but uh, anyway i hate when a lot of people or games or marketing or whatever says oh this game's you know dark like dark souls because it's got uh, a stamina bar it's like i don't really I'm sure there's been plenty of games. Ah, really? All right, let's just kill this guy. I've been wasting too much, focusing too much on talking about people saying games are dark like, dark souls like just because they have a stamina bar. So I do like the stamina bar so that you can't just attack and you've got to manage your stamina, but I feel like it's a little bit too much currently. There. We know to look out for that now, because the game told us earlier, brown floor means collapsing floor, means, which means your death. No strong hits. Now this earlier I was wondering what that is. Spoiler alert, it's a teleporter. Can I go down there? Oh, yes we can. That's why I said you gotta pay attention. Good. Oh, wait. Okay, oof. Last time I actually fell down there to my death. And I kind of forgot like the second I dropped off. All right, that's brown. I also want to be able to attack in the air, damn it. Ugh. 
Oh. Twice I felt like I hit him, but it didn't count. And then there, I felt like he was given a very, very generous hitbox. All right, so we're just gonna start skipping those so we can move on. I think you get an idea of how the combat works by now. Again, it's not bad. Uh, I could see where it could be quite interesting once they get it fleshed out a bit more. But right now, yeah, it could, it's a little, little, I mean, it's, it can be fun, but it, it, I feel like it drags on a bit too much, especially against those enemies. It feels like those enemies have about one to two weak attacks, too many hit points. Oop, sorry, I, was, I had to turn around. My cat was losing her mind. Is it this where he was? No, I guess that, that was a different area. Ah, so here's what I'm talking about, some of the backtracking that I, personally, I hate backtracking. Like if it's minimal, I don't care too much, but I know, I think I, earlier I said it wasn't too bad, but I feel like it's it's still a little bit too much. It's not awful, but it's, it's noticeable, let's put it that way. Uh, can I? I can't remember where to go at this point. I thought there was an area down there that I had to go to, but maybe not. Let's just go up. Grab whatever this is. Now, ah, more health. We do not want to do that. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we will, because getting past there without taking damage a little bit of pain. The oh, God. Pain in the butt. Ooh. Feels like this guy's easier to kill if you don't dodge. Like, just don't even bother dodging. Yeah, I still took two when I healed. Uh, no, I think we want to go this way, actually. I think. Ooh. A map definitely would not hurt for those who are navigationally challenged like myself. Just throwing that out there. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go back up this way, but there was a separate path we could take because we just went to the left. Or the right, we wanna go to the left. Probably should have waited on those. I almost did not activate that. Come on. Guy's a bit of a jerk. But he's also kind of stuck. Yeah, that attack you cannot dodge. If you, Well, if you've attacked. Oh, man. There we go. At least we got some healing back. Uh, I think... I think that's enough to open that door. Let's go check. If it's not, I will find the last one. And then we'll end up going back to open that door. But the little grate that was open, or closed, rather. But, like I guess the, I guess the, the backtrack is not awful. But, I, like I said, I personally have a big thing. That's why I don't like Metroidvanias. Or at least that's partially why I don't like them. Is I don't like I don't like backtracking, and those games tend to have a lot of it. But those of you who are okay with it, then well, I'm not gonna mind it. Yes, yeah, definitely seems better without dodging at all. Uh, let's go ahead and heal because we might get both of these guys. Oh, come on, so we've locked in again. Well, this guy's a little different. He looks pretty nice. Ouch. He's not very nice. Looks like that same strategy is not going to work. But if we hang to his right, that overhead, that left to right overhand swing, seems to go over our head in a good way. Right, let's go ahead and clear the rest of this room out. Every time it makes that noise, I keep thinking he hits me. See, we're getting the hang of that. See, again, I like that. I like that there's, I like with different enemy types, again, it's not just, oh, this enemy attacks range. This enemy's a melee. This enemy is slightly slower than this other enemy, but hits harder. Like they actually do have different patterns, different things work on them or don't work or just don't work as well. 
I like that. I think that's that's a more interesting enemy design. So there's the door that will open later. Spoiler alert. Let's head on over here. The Hall of Founders. Oh. And we pulled the Dark Souls. We put an enemy right behind the wall. I keep dodging even though I say don't dodge. Yep, definitely feel like I'm doing much better on those guys. But yeah, I, I like that type of it. And you don't really see, I feel like you don't see the in, type of enemy design a lot. Uh, a lot of times it's, oh, you know, this enemy's fast, this enemy's slow. And there might be some attacks that work better on them. But it's it's not quite as extreme that you change up your tactics significantly. Like this guy, I basically just either dodge or jump over and do two strong attacks and then a weak attack. Those other guys, we don't dodge at all. We just kind of circle around them and, and like not dodge their attacks with a dodge key, but physically move out of the way of their attacks. As you might imagine, this guy's probably not going to be a quest giver. And this is our first boss. Let me see, I assume he's supposed to be a boss. Now this guy right now is, is and I'm going to say this and get killed and look like an idiot. This guy is pretty easy. Uh, he's pretty abusable. Uh, there's a few different ways. Eh. I keep I keep thinking I'm playing Dark Souls and I want to use my invulnerability frames. It's not jumping through the lava. Like that attack right there leaves him wide open. And sometimes he'll do three or four attacks, even though when you're clearly not in front of him. The shield attack is his worst attack. I mean, worse for us. That, well, no, no, no. One, there's one where he slams his shield down. You, that is, ooh. Sneaky little. Uh, it's very fast and it's AE. He only did two attacks that time. I usually try to get on him. See, like he'll do that. And it takes him a while to kind of like cycle back around. And we can finish him off pretty easy. He didn't do his shield attack much. Uh, you actually can just stay right up on him and kind of cycle, circle around him and keep doing a melee attack. Eventually he'll, his shield will come around and he'll do that shield slam attack on you, which I don't think we saw even once, but he slams it on the ground and it does an AE hit. Uh, it's quick and it does AE, so it's actually fairly tough to do or to dodge, uh, especially because you, you don't appear to have any invulnerability frames when you dodge. So I found it better to actually, again, kind of get away from him so he does that scythe attack and then just roll in and get some free hits. I never thought I would come back to this place. The fights here have been so brutal, tearing the castle's soul, corrupting the other. It is not impossible that the abyss under the castle became a direct link to Limbo. I think I said one of those words very bizarrely. I say a lot of words very bizarrely, to be fair. All right, let's go on. I think we're actually pretty close to the end here. Appreciate you guys watching all the way through. But yeah, so far I, I've enjoyed this game. It's it's been it's been fun. I'm I'm partially intrigued because of what I've played, and I'm partially intrigued by some of the things that they've mentioned. I don't feel like they've overpromised or anything like that, but some of the gameplay elements they've hinted at, again, in particular, having hidden areas and having that unlock skill trees that you might not have gotten otherwise, having the in-game language that you can learn and unlock, and having that actually have an effect on the gameplay uh, and the ending and all that, that kind of stuff sounds very interesting. I love this room. This room looks really, really cool. Let me run into the middle, and while we do that, I'm gonna be re reading my notes to make sure I've covered everything. But yes, they did say there's a heavy focus on lore. There's also going to be puzzles, in-game puzzles. Like, I think they said one main puzzle per world or stage that you have to figure out to advance, and then three side puzzles, which you don't have to, but will unlock certain things. All right, I think we need to go in the middle, if I remember correctly. Uh, they've also said that the first playthrough of the game should take about 40 hours, is what they're shooting. More. That's actually everything that I wanted to mention, I believe. 
And again, it is going to be uh, to get the lowest tier, basically the lowest amount you can donate or not donate, but put in on the Kickstarter to get a copy of the game. It's about $22. And they are shooting for a 2018 release. This is some kind of multi-hand goat god, I guess. I feel like his left hand has two hands. All right, they're shattered. Tales of the Forgotten King. So again, I will have a link to the Kickstarter in the description below the video if you guys want to check that out. Uh, today is what, is, what day am I recording this on? You guys will see this on November 23rd, or you should. So it'll have, it'll, I should have wrote down the day exactly that was going to end. But a little bit less than two weeks by the time you guys see it, I believe. Uh, maybe a little bit less than that. So definitely check it out if what you saw was interesting. There's also a lot more detailed information on their Kickstarter page. I tried to grab as much of it as I could, but I didn't want to be droning on too much. I wanted to show you more of the gameplay side, but definitely check out their page. It does have more interesting information if you liked what you saw here. So make sure you guys leave comments also in the comments section below. Let me know what you thought of this series, or this uh, video rather, and of the game. And if you'd like to see more videos like this of coverage of games you might not have heard of, make sure to subscribe and check out that Let's Try playlist. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.